What's going on everybody? Welcome back to G-Miles World. Today we're going to be taking a look at Day 1 Madden 22 Ultimate Team Top Defensive Ends. Now I want to be very very specific about this because a lot of you guys are just chasing the OVR. Some of the players are not going to respond well on next gen. Now as far as current gen, you can get away with more budget players with less attributes and more speed. I'm warning you guys of this because I came into next gen not really understanding what the differences were and I still tried to get away with certain players. It's not going to work. The reason that I'm telling you that is the budget players that you may have been shown that have low block shed, low power moves, low finesse moves, they're going to get eaten alive by the old line of the player that you're playing against. Now when you look at JJ Watt, the biggest thing that I've always had an issue with EA Sports about is his speed. You know, starting the year off, but again, he's a D tackle, usually like left end, whatever. You know, he played a solid 3-4 uh, when he was with the Texans. You know, now he's all over the place, whatever. But this is the situation. He's still slow, but he's a good card to pretty much utilize in a 3-4 scheme. Putting him at end is probably not the smartest thing, but he's going to unlock decent types of abilities. I don't know if they're going to leave it the way that it did before and make you have to get to a 90 to unlock edge threat, but he wouldn't be a guy that I would recommend on my edge. Like he would be like an inside DN on a 3-4 on a and I would have a faster, speedier outside linebacker that can probably unlock better chems. Reason that I'm explaining that again thoroughly is that you can put him inside on a 3-4, but he's not somebody that I would say, yo, we have to have him. Because there's going to be other players that I would more, you know, more recommend for you. Because realistically, everybody's going to play a little bit slower because the game is going to be new. And, you know, everybody's not fast. With the exception of the skilled players like the wide receivers and some running backs, everybody's not that fast. So he may be useful. The bigger issue is his brother. This guy is going to be the better deal. So Steeler fans that are putting together Steeler theme teams, you guys are going to be already powering this guy up probably to an 80-81 speed, depending on how you use your strategic chems uh, with the new, um, you know, the strategic items that you get. Because we no longer put physical chems and like scheme chems on the cards. You're going to just have specific strategy cards that adds like, you know, the pass rush and the lockdown and all the other crap that we used to have to do individually. It'll just be a card. He's going to be a monster. You know, he's 6'5", he's big, he's going to go wild, bro. I would more, you know, recommend this, um, you know, pretty much that if, if we're looking for something that you want to make sure you're consistently getting, pre uh, you know, pressure, if that's something that you want to do, if it's something that you want to make sure that you're getting on a regular basis, I would probably go TJ Watt over JJ Watt. Now, it sounds weird because most of you guys, you know, that watch my videos, we came up seeing JJ Watt be a stud. Now his younger brother's there and it's like, yo, we got to go with him, right? So that's something that we're going to have to probably look at and try to analyze. But I already know at launch, I would have, I, listen, I would much rather have him on the outside screaming in the 3-4 than J.J. Watt. I would put J.J. Watt on the inside, have him on the outside of the 3-4. Now, if you're running something else, like let, let's say for instance, you're running like a big nickel, right? Because big nickel is OP on next gen and you wanted to put him in as the end for the four down lineman, he would probably also be really good. Again, big body. He has the numbers with the finesse move. Now, also, power moves in Madden 21 on both next gen and current gen were really, really necessary. We don't know what's gonna happen in 22. So we have to watch that, which is why I will make sure I'm all over that because we're gonna figure out which one is more dominant. Going back to Madden 20, finesse moves were dominant. Then they flipped it over to power moves for last year. They might switch it back. Now, Khalil Mack. I've never been crazy about Khalil Mack. Um, you know, he usually his cards are usually way overpriced. But in this case, you're getting good speed. You're getting 80s with the finesse move. 80, 86 is another tier above the 80 threshold because it go. You know, obviously it goes 80, 80 to 84, 85, whatever. But he's at the 86, so he's right there at that higher tier. He appears to be a more balanced type of DN. I would have to go ahead and say that he would be a guy that I would use early on. So at this time right now, my confidence level for Khalil Mack and also TJ Watt are high. JJ Watt, not so much. So again, if you guys want to try like four, three schemes, there's a lot of different ways to utilize these cards, but I'm going based on the fact that I'm going to interchange between a three, four odd and also a big nickel. Those are gonna be my primary defensive schemes. I might go nickel normal, 
but regardless, it's the same thing with the four down linemen. So I have to make sure that the outside guys are very, very suitable for what I'm doing. You may be able to get away with interchanging certain players in a 3-4, but just so you guys know, most of the better players are going to be running bunch tight end, bunch, and maybe like trips tight end. So when you do that, if you run a 3-4, it could end badly for you. You may have to adjust and be able to have players that can, you know, pretty much go into a big nickel set. Um, you know, obviously, depending on how the player is, you know, right outside linebacker, you could put them in at ends in the nickel. Um, obviously, you could put safeties and, you know, uh, certain sub linebackers uh, in those packages that you will make sure you have a user without abilities. For instance, if, if they still have it where linebackers cannot jump consistently, you're going to either have to put lurker on your linebackers or you're going to have to run sub linebacker packages with safeties, free safety, strong safeties and big nickel, etc. But we'll go over all of that. So don't worry about that right now. We get to Miles Garrett. Now, look, this is what's really interesting about this, right? The strength factor of Miles Garrett, we're going to find out if that really means something in Madden 22. Because that's the only major thing that will make me go for him over Khalil Mack. If you look at both the cards, they're pretty much identical in most aspects. Miles Garrett is a beast, though. And he's always been a beast in Madden. And as the game upgrades, he may get even worse. He may be a complete nightmare at launch. But I want you guys to understand, right? The strength factor is what the key is when we're taking a look at this card right now. So if strength actually is a factor, we may have to go Miles Garrett, right? 87 overall though, that price is gonna be kinda crazy. We do get power-up passes and this is a power-up. So for the first segment with the way that they do the power-ups, uh, you know, like the level up this year, you get 50 levels every season that they, they unlock. You're gonna get a power-up pass that's probably eligible for this. So depending on the card, once the game is released, I will give you guys my output, you know, as far as like the way that I'm going to set everything up for myself. And then you guys can decide which players you want to pick and choose where it wants to go. Because maybe you want somebody else. Maybe you're like, yo, g I just need certain tips from you. You know, I'm going to use this and then I'm going to do my own thing. Whichever way it is, I just want to make sure that you're more enlightened to understand current gen strength wasn't really a factor. Dude, you were getting, listen, I had Dree Archer truck Warren Sapp and just keep running for six. Strength is not a thing on current gen, but with next gen, you can kind of see for the most part that certain players will have more advantages. They're taller, they're heavier, they're stronger. So this guy is going to turn out to be really, really good. Low, low, excessively low key. I like him more than most of the cards that we just saw. I really like this card a lot because he has everything that we need in all the categories, block shed, power move, and finesse move, and he has strength. And then finally, we get the monster, the beast, the defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. Now, he's going to be a nightmare. And because of that, his price is also going to be a nightmare. Is this something that you definitely have to have? No, because I just gave you other options that we could work it with. Would I put this guy at a defensive end like the outside? Like if I'm playing big nickel, would he be my outside end? No, he's going to always play D tackle for me. He will be an early on D tackle. No matter how good his numbers are, he's so much better at D tackle when you're playing Madden. So everything across the board, his strength, power move, finesse move, block shed, absolutely sick, but he cannot play end. And I'm gonna keep telling you guys that. If you guys watch my videos and I catch you in a like, we run into each other in a game and you got Aaron Donald at end, I'll know that you have an issue, bro. Like you're not listening because he wreaks havoc on the center and the guards. And he's been wreaking havoc in Mutt for years at launch now. So it's no different. The only problem is his price is very, very excessive. So that is not gonna be something that I'm like, yo, we gotta do it. Because you're gonna pretty much spend way too much getting him early on. Now remember, there's grinding in the game. You have the, you have the, uh, the level ups and all that stuff. You have the power ups. If that's a case of the defense being so overpowered early on, we will use our power up pass on Aaron Donald and we will wreak havoc on all of our opponents on next gen. Current gen, I can't help you because it's gonna play the same way that Madden 21 current gen obviously plays right now and a lot of these factors won't really matter. They're gonna be focusing more on next gen stats and all those things on next gen. It won't be with the previous gen. So those are all the insights. I really, really like the Miles Garrett. If you pull Aaron Donald, I would keep him and play him at the D tackle position. I got so much more coming for you guys. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time.
One love, y'all.